The first step is personal protection. Inexcusably, this step is often overlooked either in haste or in disregard for fundamental precautionary measures. Ideally, when handling compressed gas, safety glasses, protective gloves, and safety shoes should all be worn at all times. In the case of even a small incident, protective apparel is useful in helping prevent personal injury. The second step is inspection. Whenever handling gas cylinders, inspect the area around the valve for corrosion, damage, or mechanical strain. And inspect the cylinder itself for signs of damage, abuse, or excess wear and tear. Seek expert assistance if you discover a potential problem. Next is preparation. Be alert and aware of what you are handling. Inspect any cylinder documentation, tags, and stenciling. Read the shoulder labels for a summary of cylinder contents, including the balance gas. Check the MSDS sheet. Following preparation is anticipation. You already know what you are handling and the nature of the chemical hazards. But accidents happen quickly. So, anticipation is key. Should an incident occur, whatever your response, you will want to be in a position to respond appropriately and without hesitation. Use the proper safeguards to help prevent incidents. Gas cylinders are awkward objects, and they pose a significant potential hazard in the event of a fall. Full and empty cylinders should be stabilized at all times. This holds true for all cylinders, all sizes, including lecture bottles and portable cylinders. Cylinder stability is also important during cylinder transportation. Only a proper cylinder hand truck, one specifically designed for moving gas cylinders, should be used, and always with a chain or strap in place to secure the cylinder. Always seek assistance in difficult settings, such as moving a cylinder up or down stairs or across uneven surfaces and inclines. Let's put the cylinder truck to work. When picking up a cylinder, position the truck as close to the cylinder as you can without interfering with your own ability to maneuver the cylinder. Two feet or less is a good rule of thumb. With the truck in position, you can remove the securing chain or strap, but do not do so until you are ready to begin moving the cylinder. Keeping the cylinder as close to fully vertical as possible, use both hands to roll and walk the cylinder into position on the carrying device. Immediately apply the chain or strap securely before tilting the cylinder truck. When delivering a cylinder, the same guidelines apply in reverse. Get as close to the final position of the cylinder as you can. Keep the chain or strap in place when bringing the hand truck to the vertical position. Use both hands to roll and walk the cylinder into position and immediately secure the cylinder with a chain or strap. Remember that cylinders are vulnerable to being bumped and tipped, so always be quick to secure a cylinder against falling. Once the cylinder is secure, it is okay to remove the valve cover and proceed with hardware installation. Compressed gases can be dangerous if handled improperly, but reasonably safe with proper training and careful attention. This video contains some guidelines, but this video is not a substitute for a proper safety training program. If your facility does not have a safety program, Matheson may be able to help you find the appropriate resources. Thank you for watching this video. At Matheson, we hope you found this video to be informative and useful. This video is about basic guidelines. Safe gas handling should be part of your core safety practices. 
follow proper safety procedures so that they become habit. Make them part of your routine every time you handle compressed gases. One hazard posed by compressed gas is that of high pressure itself. The U.S. Department of Transportation provides us with a definition of a compressed gas based on the pressure exerted by the gas on its packaging. Gases are normally shipped at standard pressures, such as shown here. Cylinders are, of course, designed to withstand pressures far in excess of the normal pressures. However, the hazards posed by an improper connection or, worse, a dropped or abused cylinder should not be underestimated. If pressure is the first fundamental hazard, exposure to the gas itself is the second. All compressed gases, with the exception of compressed air, pose some level of chemical hazard. Gases may be toxic, corrosive, flammable, pyrophoric, oxidizing, or asphyxiative. Cryogenic liquids pose the unique hazard of extremely low temperature. Some gases may have properties that complicate the chemical hazard. For instance, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are commonly used in many applications. They also are colorless and odorless, so the exposure hazard is difficult to detect without active monitoring. Some flammable gases have low flash points. In other words, they ignite easily. All gases will diffuse into ambient air. Some will mix with air, some will rise, and some will sink to the floor. But unlike a solid or a liquid, a diffusing gas may be difficult to contain and may lead to rapid contamination of large areas. In the case of a gas that is only mildly hazardous, its diffusion serves to reduce the hazard by reducing the concentration. On the other hand, diffusion of a seriously toxic gas can become a large-scale contamination problem. It's good practice never to underestimate a gas hazard. Familiarize yourself with the properties and hazards of every compressed gas you use. Be alert to not only the hazards, but also the symptoms of exposure, the appropriate first aid, and other remedial actions to take in the event of a safety incident. Compressed gases can be dangerous if handled improperly, but reasonably safe with proper training and careful attention. This video contains some guidelines, but this video is not a substitute for a proper safety training program. If your facility does not have a safety program, Matheson may be able to help you find the appropriate resources. Thank you for watching this video. At Matheson, we hope you found this video to be informative and useful. Nowadays, it's hard to find a laboratory that doesn't contain some type of compressed gas. Laboratories use these gases in many ways, to fuel heating devices like Bunsen burners, to keep materials and equipment cool, as a part of experiments and processes themselves. While some laboratories now pipe gases in from a central storage location, Many labs continue to use compressed gas cylinders to store and distribute the gases that they need. And there's a lot of gas squeezed into one of these cylinders. For example, a cylinder full of compressed hydrogen contains enough gas to fill a 260 cubic foot room. Of course, that's why gas cylinders exist, to reduce the space that's needed to store gases. Obviously, the gas in a compressed cylinder is under a great deal of pressure, and that makes the cylinders very dangerous. There are four basic ways to store pressurized gases. 
The first is called standard compression. This is where substances such as hydrogen or helium are squeezed into a cylinder but kept in their gas form. The second way to store a gas is as a liquid. This works for gases that condense under ordinary temperatures or at pressures between 25 and 2,500 pounds per square inch, such as carbon dioxide and propane. The third storage method is to dissolve a gas in a solvent. Acetylene is the only common gas that's stored this way because it's unstable in its pure form and must be dissolved to be stored. The fourth method is to compress a gas into a very cool cryogenic liquid. This is only used for substances with boiling points below negative 238 degrees Fahrenheit like nitrogen, oxygen and argon.